but I want to share the screen here because I'm I'm listening to my man Greg Papa on KMBR driving back, and Papa has this one. We're going to play this one for you, and this is courtesy of KMBR's Twitter. Uh, here's Greg Papa, voice of the 49ers. And the point I'll just make, Sam Darnold played well. You know, the ball to Ronnie Bell down the right sideline, the one over the middle to Ronnie Bell. He's a pro, and they blitzed him. They, they had back-to-back blitzes from the Mike linebacker. He ran away from Ron at one and, you know, missed one. To me, Darnold is clearly a better player than Trey Lance. It's not close. If they had to play a game, I think it's Sam. Um, and I, I think Sam can push Brock Purdy, honestly. And Brock is, they love Brock, and he processes fast. If Darnold gets this offense down, his throwing arm is elite. There is no doubt. So I think with the Mike Silver column that he wrote a few weeks ago, and I got all over him that it was early, but it was all in the back of our heads. They, they quarterbacks get hurt around here. Mm-hmm. What if you lose Brock Purdy and you lose Sam Darnold? Who do you trust playing, you know, for long stretches? Trey Lance or Brandon Allen? I think that's what they're assessing. <laughs> and the point I'll just make, Sam Darnold played well. There you go. Um, Raj? Your thoughts? Yeah, so a couple things. Uh, first and foremost, like a lot of people hated Papa on this take, and you know they're saying Sam Darnold, we're gonna ride if he's QB two. But honestly, he didn't look horrible. He started off pretty good. He did make some throws, like that throw to Ronnie Bell on the sideline was, I mean, wow, that was a good throw. And and the thing about Sam is we know he has a good arm. He's he's always been touted as having a good arm, but his his accuracy, he's prone to make mistakes. But I feel like Kyle is the type of guy that says, man, if I can really get the most out of him and develop him and be the guy that fixes him, he's going to look like a genius. And, and Kyle knows that. You know, we know Kyle has a little bit of an ego in him. And and I think that's why he brought in Sam, a guy that's going to be, a, I guess, a yes man, run the offense, do what Kyle needs you to do, distribute the ball. I've always said the 49ers need a point guard at, at quarterback uh, in this system. If he can distribute the ball out to these guys, game manage. I think he could be fine at QB2. Now, I think a lot of people want to see Trey get more opportunities. You know, he's raw. Like you said, he's very raw. Someone in the comments says he's as raw as Seminella. It's kind of funny, but it's true. He's a developing quarterback. And now three years down the line, he's still a developing quarterback. Unfortunate for him, he did get injured last year. And I think the assessment is fair that, you know, Trey Lance definitely needs more time. But on a win-now roster, we don't want to sit there and, and throw him out there and try to develop. They should have done that. Year one, I was a guy that was vocal about that. I got a lot of people hate on me. You can't bench. You can't bench Jimmy. I mean, at that point, you already were saying you're going to get rid of Jimmy. You had to get Trey Lance in there. But it's another story for another day. Now, flash forward three years, I think Trey's still ahead of him at QB2, but I think it's very close. And these next two games are going to be huge. And and we heard a lot of positive praise um, from Kyle Shanahan on Sam Darnold this offseason. He talked about how, you know, reminiscent of Steve Young. If he can get on the right team, he can be the next kind of Steve Young. I don't think he compared his talent to Steve Young, but his story arc could be like Young, where he gets to the right team, right weapons, and he could turn his career around. And he said, you know, he felt that Sam did good on Sunday. He's a guy that's going to get more opportunities. And, and the pressure's on Trey to come out and, and put this game in the rearview mirror and, and do better. Again, it was his first game in a year, but at some point, he's got to develop and, and show that he can be out there and run this offense. That's what Kyle wants. I, I think that, yeah, if Brock Purdy does have a setback, you need to feel confident that one of these guys can come in and execute the offense. Kyle needs to feel confident. And that's one thing I think he's always had with Brock. He said it yesterday on the Albert Breer article that it was the third game. He already knew that Brock was the best quarterback on the roster. So that's a big shot of confidence for Brock, but, I don't know if he feels confident with Trey. So these next two games are big. I mean, do I think Sam Darnold can beat Trey Lance? I, I think he can. And it, it's Kyle. We're not talking about me. We're not talking about your opinion. It's Kyle and his assessment. He does some things that a lot of people don't always agree with. But um, I think Sam Darnold is very close to Trey, maybe may ahead of him in, in some aspects. But I don't think Trey and Sam Darnold, or, or not Darnold, but Brandon Allen are at that same level. I think Trey's ahead of Brandon Allen. But the media is putting this spin out there that, yeah, maybe Brandon Allen's QB3. And that leads to the whole point of what's going to happen to Trey. And I know you were going to touch on that. My, if if I'm Trey Lance, Larry, I ask for a trade. I need mental clarity to know that I'm going to give the opportunity, be given the opportunity to go out there and, and 
be a starter somewhere. And if I fail, I fail. That's on me. But I don't know if he's going to get that opportunity with the 49ers unless there's a major injury. And nobody wants to see that. So where would you want to go? If would I'm you want to go somewhere where, I mean, because, I mean, in my mind, what's the issue? The issue is not that he doesn't have the talent. The no. issue is, is that he's not ready to play right now. He needs the right time. now. He needs yeah. more time. He's not ready to play right now. He's he's raw still. He's he's barely played any games. So you could argue two ways. You could argue he needs to sit and watch and learn because he clearly got better from last year to this year. Um, I thought from watching him in camp that that you know how to get better if he didn't play. So he got better because he was around the sport and he worked at it. He watched film. He worked with Jeff Christensen. He does reps with the receivers. He's getting better, um, but. You know, is he ready to play right now, week one, Heinz Field over Brock Purdy? You know, I, I always felt like that was unlikely. But it doesn't mean that, you know, I think they should give up on him. He still has really high upside. But the question is, uh, does, do, you know, who, who would, do, where does he want to go? And do those teams want him? And are the 49ers willing to make make a deal? There were three questions that were broached there by Greg Pop, and I want to get your thoughts on all three. One mm-hmm. is... That Darnold is clearly better than than uh, Lance, and it's not close. Do you agree with that? If I said, Greg said, Sam Darnold is clearly better than Trey Lance, and it's not close, and you're going to say what to that? I think in the context of him being able to run an offense, yeah, because I think Trey's a little inconsistent. We haven't seen him being able to completely run a full full offense. I think Trey's a rhythm guy, once he gets in a rhythm, yeah, he, he has some moments. Like, once he kind of got a little settled down, he, he's had moments. Sam Darnold's played 55 games in the NFL. So, in that sense of he could come out and, and pick up an offense and be able to lead a team and, and execute an offense, I think that's that's the true statement. Because Sam Darnold hasn't been here for maybe, what, six months. And he knows the playbook pretty well, I feel like. Um, Trey Lance, he's been here three years. And, again, I think a lot of it is just stunted by – the injuries and it's unfortunate I, I i do think that sam darnold in terms of running a pro offense it is ahead of him and i think it goes back to the draft was we all knew trey was as a raw guy and then he wasn't pro ready and i think that was the argument of mac jones versus trey lance you know in hindsight everybody kept saying you know well mac is pro ready that's probably why kyle wants him and and trey was the development so it, it goes down to the fact of can Trey manage an NFL offense right now? He still needs time to do that. So I, I kind of sense, in a, in a way, I agree, yeah. But, it, you know, if you're the 49ers, you did invest a lot in him. You knew he was a raw quarterback who was coming from the SC, FCS level. You knew there was, you know, big, big jump, several levels. It was not like this guy started in the SEC. He played for North Dakota State. So you knew all that coming in. Are you going to pivot off of that? to uh you know go in a different direction um and or are you gonna see it through to completion i mean should they show patience here because i mean look at it this way is it possible i mean a lot of people thought geno smith was a bust geno smith took a few years he eventually learned what exactly uh, how to run an offense efficiently um he's an older player now he's more mature and he's awesome. I mean, I thought he came off one of the best years of, of any quarterback in the league last year, and I think he's going to duplicate it this year. Um, so it's not like it was like, oh, he got lucky. No, he's been in the league a number of years, and he's gone through all the different variables, and now he's a better quarterback. Um, it's because he's more refined. The game slowed down. Um, and, and what if Trey Lance had a late career type thing? He's only 23, you know. Yeah. You think of how young he is relatively to a number of quarterbacks. Steve Young was 31 when he finally made it here in San Francisco. And and um, Alex Smith was in his eighth year when Harbaugh took over and kind of changed his whole career. So I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if, uh, if you know, it, to me, they look very comparable in practice. And Darnold looked significantly better against the Raiders in the game. That's yeah. what I would say. And as far as the next question Greg asks is, can Darnold push Purdy for the starting job? No. I, I, I don't, I'd like to see Sam Darnold play. You know, it's, I know he can do a highlight, really. He had a nice little throw there. Can he consistently move the team down the field and, and get points? I'd like to see a little bit more, more reps for Sam Darnold if he's going to be, 
you know, pushed ahead of Trey Lance. I'd like to see a little bit more of it, not just a little bl- splash play. Uh, didn't produce any points, and then all of a sudden it's like he's coming off the field. I wanted to see a little bit more of Lan- of uh, Darnold because I think he, the more he plays, the more mistakes he makes, and the more you kind of see the patterns of his struggles throughout his career. So I don't believe he can push Brock Purdy for the number one job. What do you think, Raj? Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it's not any knock on him. Again, I think he, he understands an offense in the NFL. Again, picked up the offense pretty quick, but you're right. He is a little... Um, tendency to to make mistakes. He he can make some flashy plays. Even a couple years back on the Jets, I remember playing the Niners. I mean, he made that rollout play, highlight type touchdown. I was like, oh wow, that was nice. But he has those moments, and then he follows it up with some mistakes. So, and and I think that Kyle even said, like like I alluded to, that he is going to give him more opportunities. He said he wants to see Sam Darnold play more, just like you had mentioned. So I think Kyle wants to see him more because I think he wants to really see can he be the QB two unless Brock goes down, but in terms of taking Brock Purdy's spot, there's no way because Kyle Shanahan is absolutely sold on Brock from everything we've heard this offseason. Like, I haven't seen Kyle really just hunker down and, and really support a quarterback in, in years. We, we remember the quote a couple years back. I don't know if anybody's going to be alive on Sunday. And then, you know, all the quote quotes he's had today, the quote was, the only way Brock loses his QB1 spot is if he melts in practice. And then yesterday, again, the other quote was, you know, it took me three games to know he's the best. So if you're giving that much confidence to Brock Purdy, there's no way I think Sam Darnold can go out there and upseat him. So I think Kyle really wants to make sure in case of an emergency, can Sam Darnold be the guy to be the savior? Just like last year, the savior situation. So I think that's where we're at at Sam Darnold. I don't think he can upseat Brock Purdy, but I think Kyle thinks he can turn this man around. And you're right. It does take some players some time. Like And Sam Darnold, this has been a couple of years for him. He was a bust. You know, he came out. He saw ghosts. We all saw that. But this is kind of what, year five, year six for him? So maybe now this is the year where he figures it out. Just like you said with Trey, it might take him some time. Do I want them to get rid of Trey? No, because I think down the line, maybe he might figure it out. You need to have patience. But for Trey's sake, he needs to play to get, you know, to not just sit around. I, I, again, if I'm Trey, I'm asking for a trade. Because in my mental space, I need to know if I can play. I don't want to just sit around my whole life and, and be on the bench. So for if I'm Trey, yeah. But if, on the Niner hat side of things, as a Niner fan, putting my hat on, I want to keep Trey because you're right. You got to have patience with the guy like that. Um, and I think Kyle knows if he tra- if he gets rid of him, and if he pans out, then Kyle's gonna be like, man, I should have just stuck on with him. So, but they don't owe him that. I think again, they got to owe they owe Trey the opportunity to be the best version of himself. What do you think of the last part of Papa's question, which was he kind of makes it seem like it's a like it's a tough call between Lance and Brandon Allen for the number three job. I mean, think about that. I mean, that's the way Greg's framed that. Like, like um, you know, who do you want coming off the bench? Um, you know, uh, cold basically. You know, in a football game, the veteran Brandon Allen or the raw Trey Lance. I mean, that's what it sounded like the way he was framing that. Um, I don't know. What do you? I mean, what do you think on this one? I mean, personally, Lance has got a, a lot of upside. If you're going to move on from Lance, that's a dramatic, dramatic move. Um, I would imagine there has to be something dramatic coming back in return. Otherwise, you know, you're sitting there going, "Hmm, that's that's just a swing and a miss with that much draft capital." I think if I were them, I would rather you know do something, find some other veteran player that they could get to uh to be you know to come back in a deal for him if they decide to move him but what do you think i mean this do you think they're really debating between you know brandon allen at a million dollars as the number three guy or trey at at nine million dollars but you know with the guy that's what a year ago they thought was their franchise quarterback yeah if they are if they are that's a slap in the face to trey lance that's crazy I mean, no disrespect to Brandon Allen, but you're right. He doesn't have the upside of a Trey, and I think that's why they wanted to draft him. He had the upside. He has this this potential, but again, it, it's going to take some time to get out of him. And I, I feel like that take, that part of the take was where I was like, okay, there, that's where the pushback for me came back because I was like, whoa, that was kind of a spicy take. And I think a lot of that deals with – Pop was kind of one of those guys that was pro Mac Jones, and he kind of felt a lot of pushback after the draft. I mean, people roasted him on Twitter – when he said, oh, you know, I can't believe they're, they're drafting Trey Lance. This is a sacrilege. This was terrible. He was he was on record of saying, you know, it was a bad pick. He, they should have went Mac Jones because he was pro-ready. So I feel like that's part that part of him is coming out 
in that take and saying, yeah, Trey's not even capable of being a player in this team. Stick with Brandon Allen, the vet, which I, I get where he's coming from in terms of sticking with the vet that can pick up an offense again. But that's crazy to me to just give up on a, on a player you spent that much capital on to just throw him out of there for Brandon Allen, who's was backing up to Joe Burrow, you know, and, and all of a sudden you just signed him for depth because you know you needed another guy out there, maybe to be your practice squad fourth emergency. That, that's crazy to me. Again, Trey just needs some time, but this is a win now team. And, and I feel like it's, you don't want to give a, a win now team, a, a developmental quarterback, but 